Hi, welcome everybody um, to Telling Porkies. Today we are blessed with the company of Liz and Boz Bora, um, Liz of Shalili Sisters, and Boz of Polecats, and also Morrissey's guitarist. Um, welcome, thank you, to uh, joining in on Telling Porkies. Um, what we do is we just basically discuss records in your collection that have come etched with Porky Prime Cut on them. Um, if you'd like to just tell us how you selected your records and, and what your choices are. Well, I went through my records <clears throat> and I found records that I played on that George had cut and inscribed. Sometimes my own messages. Oh, lovely. Well, oh, what's your first choice in you? Um, there's, there's, there's a, this is one called uh, Rampage by the Planet Rockers. And there was one summer when um, I used to go up to George started off in Portland Place and then he had a new then he moved to um uh what's it called? Um uh, Shaftesbury Avenue. Right. Okay. And, and there was one summer when I was up there every few days just hanging and drinking and cutting records and and this is one by the Planet Rockers called Rampage, which is a very good record. It's an instrumental. And it says on the runoff groove, it says, Prince Edward, Duke of Winchester, Tarzan Bill, Sonny Motators, and the Grand Pooh Bar. Cheers, mate. <laughs> and now that's... that would be, Prince Edward would be Eddie, Eddie Angel, the guitar player. Yeah. The Duke of Winchester was Mark Winchester, who went on to play bass with Brian Setzer. Tarzan Bill was Bill Sh Billy Schwartz, a drummer. Sonny Motators was Sonny George. And I imagine the Grand Pooh Bar was probably Barney who ran that record label. So that's... Uh, is that's are you, were you playing on that record? No. No. But we, we played with Sonny for years later in a... Sonny's from Hermitage, Tennessee. The band are all uh, American band. So we played in a band with Sonny here in Europe and in America, and we're all still good friends. Um, but Boz was involved in that band, producing, and we, did you produce? I mixed a, a mixed, live album. Yeah, and, um... at that time in the early 90s. So, right, okay. Then my, one of my choices is, is one of my own records. And what's which, that? Which is the Shillelagh Sisters and Tyrannical Mets. <clears throat> and we recorded this in Torag, oh, live in a half a day it was at the end of a cowboy barn session yeah and it's a uh, nice oh Irish. lovely <laughs> now without my glasses i haven't got them on you'll have to read so on one side it says a porky prime cup for the boss man and on the other side it's it, it, the other side it said well i would be looking at you which is what jackie's mum the singer from the shillelagh sisters who was a banana rama as well um, ah. Her mum, whenever they got into a fight, they'd be arguing, and then her mum would say, "Well, I would be looking at you as an answer to anything." Yeah, to, uh, to any <laughs> argument. So we, we would be looking at you. We obviously must have had that joke with George for him to have written that on there. Oh, no. I think there was there was alcohol taken that day. So, uh, and how was life in the Shalila Sisters? It was good. It was a very uh, early nineties. Um, Cow punk, rockabilly, psychabilly ish thing that it's lasted much. We've seen the rockabilly scene, you know, it's very blokey. Um, yeah. How did they take you? No, great. You know, <clears throat> not, not a problem. It only lasted for um, that lineup probably two years maximum. And then Jackie went off and joined the, the Nanas, and I went into Shout Sister Shout, and then I, I had my first child. and pushed up into the late 80s and we got back together again in the mid 90s and went off to Japan with Jackie, myself, Boz and Woody from the meet, uh, what was Woody's famous? Who's in the meet yours? Meet yours and the Johnson family. Daleks. Uh, the Daleks, yeah. Which is another record that George Beckham cut. Oh, there you go. I came across that yesterday. Um, and we were just about to go off and do Viva Las Vegas in, in April. For a, a reunion. Oh, okay. 
which obviously we didn't get to, but um, yeah. ne next year, next, next year. year. Absolutely. And how was Japan? When you Great. Right. Like, the, the Shillelagh sisters were um, popular there. Who, know, who would have known? But yeah, it was great. <laughs> it was really good fun. I think they like the big pompadour hairstyles and, you know, the more glammy, makeup-y aspect of There's our look. Band. We played with a five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. And another band with girls in called the Floozy Drippies. Yeah, the Floozy Drippies, yeah, the <laughs> Japanese. <laughs> the five, six, seven, eight, so obviously it was yeah. Quentin Tarantino used That's to right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we played with them early, early on. Um, yeah, it's great. I mean, we've been at many times. I've been with tour managing over there with bands and I've been with Boz with Morrissey <sighs> and took the kids over. I love it. Love it. It's a one, wonderful place. Yeah, one it's great. For 40 hours only in Tokyo. Oh. Well, you have to <laughs> take, Kitty and, take Kitty at some point and spend <laughs> some time. It's wonderful. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Last time I was there, I was there for a day. But I do enjoy it. <clears throat> so that was the Shillelagh Sisters album. Any yeah. tracks called uh, Fool I Am is one of my favourites. Yeah, and we did a version of Boots Are Made For Walking that's on there. And that is still available, that album, from Vinyl Boutique, our little record oh, store. Wonderful record store. Love your Thank record you. shop. Thank you. It's We're got on... that thing that, that's great with a record shop of slightly intimidated you what are you you're going the wrong direction you know because it's through the shop and down downstairs the, into the basement it's just a den of loads of records it's fantastic. out of the back door and go the wrong way and so, yes, a lot of people end up in the shed <laughs> I don't know. And <laughs> but yeah we're um we're we're quite busy we're doing online stuff our discogs page obviously our little shop shut for now but um yeah, oh, we miss it. It's good fun down there at the weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And boys, so, uh, your next choice there? Um, there's a I'm playing a bag with the Blubbery Hellbellies. Okay. Uh, a little after the Shillady Yeah, sisters. about 85, maybe. In the mid 80s. Yeah. And we did an album called Flabbergasted. Um, the singer was um, Arthur Billingsley, who was Arturo Basic in The Lurkers. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Slim was uh, the accordion player. My good friend Lloyd Tripp played double bass. Lloyd was in the, uh, what was his band Vibes. before? The Vibes, yeah. And the Stingrays. And Danny Heatley played drums. He was in the Boo Hill Foot Tappers. And he exploited for a while. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> it's called Flabbergasted. I wrote a track on there called My Baby, She's As Fat As Me. It's all about fat, it's all fat songs. And they were all fat except for Boz. Because he was skinny then. <laughs> In fact, it says a porky prime gut. A oh, prime gut? Oh, that nice little play on one there. Side. And on the other side, it says, those who indulge, bulge. <laughs> and eat fast, die young. Brilliant and stuff. I was also going to say, another day, another donut, but that went onto a badge instead. <laughs> <laughs> and when was this, 85, did you say? Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, I reckon so. Fill it up right, put it. Yeah, 1985, exactly correct. Yeah. And were you guys all based in London at that time? Yeah, we, we did a little uh, uh, re uh, reformation in uh, Ding, uh, at uh, the Dublin Castle in March. Yeah, this year. With Esso playing drums from the Lurkers. Uh, we played a couple of songs, uh, one of our little get-togethers we do down there during the day at um, the Dublin. And uh, it was good fun to see everyone because Lloyd was over seeing his mum, so we we did a little gig down at the Dublin. Oh, lovely! <laughs> what else we got? Oh, yeah, we'll move on to the next choice. Well, this is the Polecats album. Aha! Okay, yes, Polecats are go. That I didn't know until I was at George's place one day, and he had some uh, master tapes on the side, and he had a master tape that said the Polecats. And I said, how, how come she got a Polkats master tape? He said, oh, I must have, I must have mastered it. And um, I always meant to pick those tapes up and I never did. But they'd been there for 20 years. Well, I don't know. This album came out in 80, or oh, maybe... 81. 15 came years. Out. And when I looked in the cut, cut in the one-off groove, it says, a Porky Prime Polkatted cut. He said... You've got all the boutique ones, he's sort of... <laughs> and on the other side, yeah. 
the first song is called Little Pig, and it says a li because he's all about. There was all pictures of pigs and little China pigs everywhere in the in the cutting room. He collected little pigs. And because uh, we did a song, the first song was Little Pig. He said a little piggy prime cup. Oh. So, so you had a selection of pigs down in the Mastodon Studios, yeah? Yeah, and everything was to do with pigs, little pig yeah. stickers. And... <laughs> so um, he cut that before I knew him. And have you got any specific memories about that LP? Was there anything sort of, any little tales from the studio or anything for that? We recorded it with Dave Edmonds at Eden Studios in Acton over two weeks. Um, how High the Moon is the first track, side one, track one. And the two guitars on it, I didn't quite get the chords right. So Dave Edmonds was showing me the chords. And I said, well, we don't, why don't we just play it? So the cut that's on there is him playing guitar and me facing each other, just playing live. Wow, okay. And that was the take. There's no overdubs on it. And the, uh, the ending's pretty good. But that's just me and Edmund's like facing off. That, cool. that was before he produced the Stray Cats, wasn't it? No, it's after. After the Stray Cats, right. Okay. Because we like the drum sound particularly. Right, okay. Well, it, little Pig, he did the little a cappella thing because that didn't exist until he cut it up and he took the whole, whole, whole bar my chin, chin, chin and he made it a cappella and he added it, edited it to the beginning of the track. So that's wow. pretty cool. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I grew up in the town that I grew up in as, um, and Psychobilly was unpropor unproportionately large, you know, it was just a huge phenomenon there. So Paul Cut's King Kurt were as big as Simple Minds and, and U2 yeah. in my area. It's really incredible, you know, I grew up, they were just massive, massive, massive bands. Of, where, where did you grow up? Greenock. Oh, Greenock, yeah. 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 I know the I town of as well. I think, the, I think King Kurt used to play regular. I think that's what, it, what caused it. So it was, yeah, it was just, it was a huge, you know, one in three jackets used to have sort of a psychobilly band on the back, on the back. The Shillelaghs, we went to, we went to Glasgow to Barrowlands in 83, um, and that was sold out. But actually we went with King Kurt, though. No, no um, Spirit of Destiny. Spirit of Destiny. Destiny. Yeah, we went up with them, but we had, um, we had a good, a good crowd in for us that night. I, I played in there. Uh, yeah, and I think in Scotland they always like that sort of. Greenock Town Hall. I sang in a choir there when I was about 16. Oh, really? And then I played with Morrissey there a few years back. Mm. Mad. Which of the bigger crowd? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I suppose we'll swiftly move on to your next choice, if that's okay. Yeah. Well, this is a band that we used to manage called Howlin' Wolf and the VJs. Okay, yeah. yes, I've heard of Helen Wolf, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Helen Wolf is now called James Hunter. That's what it is, yes. He enjoys a lot of success. And um, this was uh, produced and engineered by Bowles Bora. And it was with Andy Neal on guitar and Matt Radford on bass, just after Dot and Tone had left. They were... The original bass player and... Um, guitarists were a couple, female and male couple, okay. and they, they left, and then this is the so next I must have, lineup. I must have recorded this at Chrysalis, where I used to work as an engineer in the right, 80s. Right, I'll you then. And, um, and in, on the runoff groove, it says, thanks to Dot and Tone, and what's occurring, which is what Tone always used to say, what's occurring, what's occurring, what's occurring. Yes, Gavin and Stacey, yeah. Got, yeah. any, got any eggs? What's occurring? Yeah, this is eight, uh, uh, mid eighties. So on one side, there's a there's a thanks to them, and on the other side, it says his face, his face, his yeah. face, which is something I said at school. <laughs> how it ended up on a runoff groove. But no, Wilf James Hunter always used to go his face like in joke and it was a, and somehow George it's from when I was at school and I don't know why it became why you, it's on the run of group yeah you used to say it to Wilf and he'd say it back to you too I remember you doing and it he came from when I was at school <laughs> at the ice cream van yeah so George obviously picked up on all these little in jokes yeah 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 oh there was um what one time I was telling a story about an amplifier that I'd bought in a in a car boot cell 
for a pound. And um, I said, you can't, you can't get a doorstop for a pound. And I was using it as a doorstop in my studio. And I saw a doorstop for one pound 50. And I was explaining to him it was cheaper than a doorstop. And then in a the runoff group, he, he wrote, I'll buy that sound for a pound. A oh, great. Brilliant. So yeah. he was always, always thinking. Yeah. And you know, he cut all the Beatles records at, when he was at Apple. Yes, that's, that's a, the story I heard was that he, he was sold when he was in a Mercy Beat period. He was in a band during the Mercy Beat era. And yeah. um, he sold an amp to Paul McCartney, a bass amp to Paul McCartney. And that's how they kind of got to know each other. He is a scouser, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now I thought I this is a record obviously that I didn't play on. Old time classic. It's uh, another music in a different kitchen. Now when I was a kid, I went and saw the Buzzcocks at the Roundhouse in nineteen seventy seven. And when we came out I was at the same gig but I didn't know him. Right, okay. <laughs> everyone was given the badge, it just said another music in a different kitchen and a date. October 77 and I never knew what it meant until the record came out I was like oh that's what what that badge was which is long been lost but um well, of course the LP didn't come out for quite a while for a punk band didn't it the Buzzcocks took a while that's right but it didn't come out till 78 yeah. which by Martin Russian and uh engineered by Doug Bennett I saw um Steve Diggle the other day in a pub well, actually, it's more than two months ago now. Oh, yeah. He's a lovely fella down in Camden. And um, he'll always give you a time of day, Diggle. He'll always give you a time of day, no matter yeah. what. Yeah. Have a chat. No, he's lovely. We were in a little pub. I've got a new. Uh, I've got a new arch down in Camden, and I retired to the, the nearest hostelry, and uh, he was there. So all it says in the runoff group is hmm, H M M M. And I don't quite know the meaning of it. He couldn't he could have understood the buzzcocks to pick up their jokes with them. And R A H H H on the other side. Mm. <laughs> ah. Ah. But it's uh, it's a favourite record of mine. And uh, I did have the little plastic bag that came with it when it first came out. Well, did it come with a plastic bag? I didn't realise that. Yeah, I think it said product on it, on the plastic bag. And my um. My classical guitar teacher worked at United Artists, so occasionally I'd get free records, and she gave me this, and she gave me 999, which I played last night. Your classical guitar teacher? What a cool yeah. classical guitar teacher. <laughs> so uh, that's the Buzzcocks. Did we have one more? No, there's loads. Oh. <laughs> the, first, the first time I ever went to an attended cup, which is what it's called. It costs a little bit more because I think it takes a bit longer. Right. And what's an attended cut? It's when you go there. So you give the go ahead. It's, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you, I mean, you're it, in there experiencing it. Th this record I made in my house upstairs. We made, yeah, we made this here. And uh, in 80, I didn't really know what I was doing. 80. 83, maybe. And uh, I didn't really know what I was doing when I was mastering it. I borrowed a two track and I did the mixes. And of course I left too many gaps in between. I don't think I put any leader tape in between. All the things I learned afterwards when I became a proper engineer. Okay. And I attended the cut, which is uh, uh, when it used to be up in Portland Place. See if it's got the date on it on that. Uh... We've just had bands coming in all day and recording them on a little four track. It's a really good record actually. Some of it's great. Howling Wilf, that's the first time I met Howling Wilf. That's how we met Wilf, yeah. Right, okay. Wigsaw Spliffs, The Rapids, and uh, me under loads of different names. So it's a compilation LP, this? Yeah. 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 And it's called Dance To It, but at one point I was going to call it Nine Out Of Ten Cats Prefer It, because it was Rockabilly and Rockabilly Cats. So um, it says that on one of the run out groups, Nine Out Of Ten Cats Prefer It, yeah. which was the working that. title. And on the other side, it says, Hello Cam's Cats, which is uh, the cats from Cambridge who would um, go and see the Wigsaw Spliffs. Right, okay. okay. So Just... that's a little call out to them. So, uh, lovely stuff. 
that was the first time I went to, uh, to, to the first time I met Pokey. And so was there lots of scenes in different towns that you find that that period was a little hot spot areas around the country? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that Cambridge thing was, was, was definitely a, a scene. When I, I used to put gigs on at the Clarendon in the basement in the 80s. They were quite successful. That was the big the, centre, was it not? That big centre for rock, I believe. The Clarendon was a big centre for everything. Well, they did the club foot there. The Psychobilly club foot upstairs, but there was a little room downstairs that we used to book out. It's only about maybe 100 or something but, people. But when I put the, the uh, Wigsall Spliffs on, they would bring a bus, a coach with them. Wow, well, okay. Like, 40 odd, 50 people. And there, at that time as well, remember, there was the whole university circuit. Mm -hmm. You know, there was mm -hmm. gigs on at universities, there was student unions, and we, we played loads of universities. Okay. Um, all, through, all throughout the country. Um, yeah, we used to tour, you could, there were brilliant ones, Norwich. Keel was a good one. UEA, Keel University, Loughborough. Um, a little bit off the beaten track. Was that a better, better atmosphere? It was. Yeah, and, it, and, it, and everybody that lived in that area then, or around that area, that was into the rocking or the psychobilly or whatever, they would all come along. You know, well, apart from Portsmouth, where they wouldn't let. It was only students allowed in. <laughs> they wouldn't let the rocking lot in. So, so too um, rough. Portsmouth, <laughs> Portsmouth Poly, and um, so then there were groups of um, rockabillies, sort of threatening students outside to sign them into the gig. And it went off to yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the most firing things I've ever been to. What was that? The polecats? Yeah. yeah. It was, uh, oh, there was glasses flying and everything. <laughs> and the bloke got on the stage. He went, I was hiding behind my amp because it was just glasses. <laughs> I hid behind the amp and uh, this bloke got on the stage. He was, Pe people, people, please, 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 please. We can all live together side by side. And then someone just threw a glass and hit him on the head and it was horrible. It was... Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Rough, yes. rough, rough days of rock rough, and roll. Rough days of rock and roll on the road. <laughs> and what were your favourite towns to play? Um, well, we always did well in uh, around Norwich. Okay. Great Yarm. Uh, there was a big rockabilly, well, there still is a rockabilly festival at Caister. Um, uh, the UBA, the Gala Ballroom. The art centre there was great for music. Um, uh, Bath, do you remember we used to go to Moles? Moles, Moles that was more the R&B pub circle. That was yeah. a great place. Yeah. Small, but um, always very well attended. Uh, we used yeah, to go down to play in Portsmouth. Moles. Yeah. Playing Portsmouth. I was in a band called the Deltas for most of my life. And uh, occasionally, I remember going down to Portsmouth, playing on the top of a... Multi-story car park. There was a nightclub, but all very dodgy, but good fun. Yeah, I remember that place right at the top of the car and, park. And I got Will booked rough. in there in the eighties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. But we'd just go off. We used to just go off to places like Amsterdam and go busking. You know, yeah. Just take off. I mean, it was. I don't know. It just seemed a lot freer. I know that we, it wasn't all like in Europe, and you had to do carnets and all. But we would just take off and and tip up and just do it. Put the hat out. Just yeah. do it, yeah. Happy to not earn yeah. any money. Yeah, yeah. Just go on the piss. <laughs> <laughs> I remember playing at the Bradbury Hillbillies in Arnhem in a squat club which had rooms adjoining it. That yeah, we I think just we told all stayed. Room. Yeah, we stayed there. Rough. And we got a case of beer each. Big bottles of grog. Bikers, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah, that was our, uh, was that our payment? Was the beer? No, I think we got, got paid as well. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but we drank a case, case of beer each. That's where, how I learned to drink on the road <laughs> with the Padre. <laughs> a case of beer each. There you go. <laughs> and then we'd all be dragging these cases around the venue. That's mine. That's mine. When you go That's off, you drag right. a case of it. And I'm sure at the end, somebody cut, have you got any beer left? I've drank all mine. <laughs> but Scotland was good as well. We always did well up in Scotland. Yep. Scotland was always good for us. Still, still, still great for Morrissey. Morrissey gigs. Yeah, yeah. Barrowlands is um, always amazing. Um, I remember as a punter with Barrowlands, it used to rain on you because the condensation would hit the roof and then just come back down. So it felt like rain. You just look up there. When we first played there, there was a knock on the window. 
of the dressing room. Uh, right upstairs. You know how, how high it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a knock on the window. Someone had shinned up the Some kid drain pipe. who didn't have the money to get in. It was about six floors up, wasn't it? It was yeah. at the top of that building. Yeah. It opened, still is. Opened up the window oh, no, and let him in. Can you let us in? And I went, yeah. I mean, he was so determined to get to that gig. <laughs> Incredible, isn't it? Yeah. What yeah. if he said no? Get <laughs> out. <laughs> oh. Get out. <laughs> Poor kid. Yeah. Guys, it's been really, really lovely talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. We're going to wrap it all up. Uh, uh, just to put a shout out to everybody, I absolutely advise vi uh, visiting Vinyl Boutique. It's a phenomenal shop. And thank, thank you very much for bringing it to the world. Thank you. Lovely. Thanks okay, for having us. All the best. Thank you. Bye. Bye.